I'm glad to be here. This is a change. I'm glad, I, I like talking to adults for a change, so it's going to be fun. Um, so just so I know, I don't know what you guys are all about. So how many people are full-time professional painters, Art, artists, yeah? How many people are teachers, <laughs> hobbyists, just do it because you love it, okay, all right. Um, anything else I leave out? Illustrators, any illustrators? Yeah. Um, what else? How about retired wannabe full-time? There you go, yeah. <laughs> how, many, so how many people paint in oils? Okay. How many watercolor? Yeah. Okay. My brother paints in watercolor. I tried watercolor for a while, and I hated it. It was so <laughs> frustrating. It's so hard. I, I admire anybody that can pull off watercolor paint. Um, but uh, let's so I need to look. Pastels? Uh, pastels. You do pastels? The oils or just the dry pastels? Dry yeah, I've tried that. I like them, but they're really messy. I, I, that, well, that, that depends me. on what messy is. You should see me cleaning my hands when I do with oil. Right, but the, but the, then they, but they stay kind of. I, I yeah anyway. I, I I just did one a couple months ago. I like them, but it's it's you not my preferred. Use water to clean your hands. You have to use sulfur to clean your hands. <laughs> so so we got a range. Anybody do prints? Prints? Yeah, I did some woodcuts for a while. Played around with it. Wasn't my thing, but it was really fun. Um, You've done so, an artist there. What's that? Tell me what you do. Pen and ink. Pen and ink. Yeah. Okay. I love pen and ink. Yeah. I do a lot of drawings, a lot of sketches. Um, and even have you ever, so I was just down in the Blick before I came up here. I stopped at Blick and had to get some supplies. Um, and I've tried. Have you ever tried those really big acrylic markers? Like 15 millimeter. I mean, it's like raw. And it's really fun. I, I, I like those. I've done some of that. Yeah, I like doing even the bigger ones like that. So, um, so anyway, um, let me just, and I'm going to keep an eye on this, so I don't get too too long winded. But um, so when I was in school, we took it. Me and two other people. We took a trip to New York City as students to kind of get a feel for what it was like out there because we wanted to be we wanted to be illustrators and some of the students from previous years had moved to New York and were living there so we stayed with them and went around and saw some art directors and went to see we went to see the chorus line and we went to the top of the twin towers when they were still there and it was years and years and years ago and just did a few things like that and we visited a couple named Mark and Stephanie Gerber who were doing paperback book covers. She painted, <clears throat> excuse me, and he did the drawings for them. And uh, she was just an amazing painter. And anyway, they were doing lots and lots and lots of book covers. And so I got this brilliant idea that I wanted to do book covers. So I worked on my portfolio, prepared things that I thought would be good for that. And then a couple years later, or a year or so later, with another friend, we went out to New York, got an apartment in uh, what's called, uh, it wasn't quite Washington Heights, it's the Upper West Side, Spanish, Harlem, just a lot of Cubans, Dominicans, Haitians, everybody spoke Spanish. It's West Side Street, it's West Side Story. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> close to uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, if anybody knows New York. But uh, believe it or not, rent was like, I don't know what it was, it wasn't not, it wasn't much, we reached paying maybe three, hundred or something a month we split the rent just two of us it was crazy but it wasn't the best neighborhood either but I'm sure it's gone way up since then but and then just started seeing art directors and and, and talking I got a few uh, magazine pieces but then I got into book covers relatively easy I've met a an art director that liked to work with young uh, you know starting new new illustrators and uh, he gave me a chance and uh, I did a piece for him. It was an awful book. It was a, it was a thriller. It was a bloody horror book. You know, one of those awful. You know, and but and so I wasn't real proud of the work. But but it but it was so cool to go into a bookstore a few months later, and there it is, a stack of ten of them on the shelf. You know, with all the new books, right? And then I started doing covers for him. Um, so I want to talk about art as a journey. Okay, so as a so you go through different sp phases. Period, at least I have, and a lot of people do. And that's kind of what I started out as, is painting in a style that was useful for these covers. Um, so um, let me pull out a couple here. I've got, I've got one here. So this is the actual, this is the actual painting and a cover. I just, I did this years ago, and I'm 
showing something. But this is the painting here. It's an oil painting. Really tight, really realistic, and pretty simple, but everything's really compact. It is very symbolic, which is what they wanted, and then it just shows up here on the foot. Back then, they were doing a lot of embossing. It just, I don't know if they do it so much anymore, but it was the thing. But I'll pass that around and just take a look at it. Um, and so that was kind of what I, that was my, that was my approach, that was my style. I was doing that and um, painting um, for book covers. And back, that was, this was during the Cold War still. This was like, Ronald Reagan was president, the wall hadn't come down, there was a lot of stuff about the Cold War. So this was a spy novel, had something to do with nuclear weapons, secrets, and you know, spies, I don't remember the story. But so I did this for it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pass some things you guys can look at, because we're just a small group, we might as well. And that actually went on this book here. It's called the Zolta Configuration. Anybody heard of this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Some of these you might have heard of, because one of these guys is actually, that guy's actually fairly famous, the Louis Grizzard. Anybody remember a show called Designing Women? Yeah. Okay, you remember the husband? The guy, he was, had a really strong southern accent, he was a comedian, remember uh -huh. him? That's Louis Grizzard. He wrote a lot of books, uh, uh, humorous books, and that was one of his, kind of a true story about him and his relationship, troubled relationship with his father, and that was his. So that one, he's, he's, he's fairly well known. But, um, so that was, um, let's see, I got another one in here. This one was uh, uh, <laughs> Condor here, eating the, eating the capital. It's, it's actually called Condor. So this was a, a designed to be a wraparound. So I had to, to do this um, and design it like this, and then they print all of this, obviously. Um, so this style required quite good reference material. You know, you had to have a good photograph or a good copy of something. I had to look up condors. And back then, they, they didn't have the internet. You couldn't get on your phone and just do a Google search. So you had to come up with images. And they actually, in the New York Public Library, there were so many illustrators in New York City that they had a room probably as big as this, just dedicated to images that you could check out. So you could go in there and say, I need condors. And they would go pull a bunch of condors out. And, you could, and they were on pieces of cardboard, like you'd take them home and rent a piece, you know, like a lot of art, and you could have it for a week or whatever and take it back and check it out. And so that was kind of interesting. Things have really changed. So, but that style, painting realistically like that, gets, it got tedious because you got to, you know, you got to take photos. You got to find photos. You, you're doing a lot of prep work that I found kind of hard to do. Um, Can I ask you? Yes. Uh, did, did the author, the publisher, tell you what they want? Did you ever? Do you have to come in? And sometimes. Talk? Sometimes. Um, you read the book and then. You sometimes, uh, yeah. Uh, it depends on the art director, and I worked with both kinds. I like art directors that I'll tell you about a guy later in, in Denver that I really loved working with. Because he would just throw me a doc, a manuscript, and read it, and then I would talk ideas with him, and he'd say, "Okay, do it." And he wouldn't even require a sketch in the beginning when I worked with him. So that was kind of fun. This one was have you ever heard of the the Cat Who books? Anybody read these? They're kind of fun. They're kind of fun. There's a whole series. Yeah, the Cat Who did this. The Cat Who did this. There's a whole series, like 30 of them. Yeah, and they're kind of fun actually. I've read them. This is one, and this was a large print publisher, so it's a reprint of a book that was printed and then there was a, there's all kind New York is full of public publishing houses and magazines. It's a great place for an illustrator to go. Um, so this actually I did when I was living in I think I was living in Salt Lake when I did this. It was later. And I went down to Sugar House and back before it's been was gentrified and turned, you know, and everything tore down, put new new buildings. They still had all those old, you know, antique shops and everything. And I took a photo and, and based, because it, it was a story about a cat, and it was antique stores and all this in, in, the, in the back story. And so I, that's a, actually, my reference was Sugar House. Sugar House, yeah, yeah, so that's kind of fun. Anyway, so I brought that just because of that. So I did that for a couple of years. I lived in New York. Yes, sorry, right, anytime you have questions, yes. What, what medium did you use to These are oil. Oil, not acrylic. No, it's oil paint and, but I'd use a dryer so it would mostly dry overnight or in a couple of days. So that was one problem I had with it. It took a long time to do a painting if you were doing a lot of, a lot of changes, a lot of layers. And it took a long time to do these. So no air brushing. No, no, I never did because that was big when I was in school. But 
and I always thought I should pick up an airbrush, but I just never did. Yeah, um, I'm kind of glad I didn't, but they were useful. I mean, everybody, a lot of people were using them. Um, so, I forget where I was. Um, yeah, anytime you got a question, please raise your hand. Yes, go ahead. What did it take for pencil? You know, it's pencil, and I can't remember. I think they were a thousand or less when I was starting, they, which wasn't too bad back then. I, and I never made a ton of money on them, but, but then they got better. I mean, I think the uh, Louis Brizard one, I think was 2,000, 2,500, or something like that. It was a little more, that, that first one there. It just depended on the publisher. That's a little larger publisher. I think that's Avon Books, or I forget which one that is. Um, some of the bigger companies paid better, and depending on the author, depending on, you know, so, but it was, it was okay for one piece, because, you know, magazine pieces usually paid a lot less than that, right, so. Yeah, and, you know, I, I didn't care. I was single, and yes. No, you just get a one-time fee, and uh, no, it's not like children's books. You know, some of those where you get a deal where they pay you a royalty on every book you sell, right? Um, does anybody know Lily Toy Hong? She lives. She does. She does. Um, she's here in Salt Lake someplace. She does. Um, uh, she's down to Sandy now. They, she does uh, Chinese folk tales, and she turns them into children's books. And, and she was one of those who went with me to New York on that first visit when we went out there. But she, but yeah, that's her deal. So she gets, she does a book, does all the artwork for it. She writes them too, so she gets double royalties for author and illustrator. And every time a book sells, you know, anyway. So that's that's an interesting career, that, that whole thing. <laughs> I know several people that have gone into that. Um, a lot of people want to do it, it's hard, yes? This black. Yes. Several layers of black, just several layers. Yeah, just just pretty dense, just pretty dark. Your brush. Yeah, and they wanted. So back then they were they were taking photos and making and color separations to go to the printer. It was a different process. And and if they had any any problems with these, they had people they hired to go in with a brush and paint. So if they had any reflections or anything on the you know from the from the photograph, they would go in and paint it out and uh, actually on the on the on the. Separations. It was. Uh, they had all kinds of. The technology was so different that they, it was really interesting to see that. But um, um, any other questions on that? Just if you got one, raise your hand. Um, so I liked it, but it locked me into needing a lot of time to paint them, really good reference, and I, frankly, I wasn't that interested in painting super realistically. So it, I felt. It kind of, I felt kind of locked into it, but it was doing okay, and it was, I needed it, so I kept doing it for quite a while, even after I left New York. I stayed in New York for about two years. I moved to Denver. I, New York is a tough place to live, and like you said, I'm from small towns. You know, I grew up in Vernal, and I lived in Montrose, Colorado, and around. I went to school in Logan, so New York was a, I'd been in other cities, but New York was overwhelming yeah and it was a wonderful place to be it's full of opportunities right and the galleries and the museums and food and everything but unless you make a lot of money you can't really take full advantage of New York and I wasn't making a ton of money and I just found it overwhelming so I left and went to Denver which was a, a, a felt more like Salt Lake back then it's kind of a small western city um, stayed there for a couple years question. yes I see on the cover here Right. Versus your kids. Yes, that's embossed. So they would create, so they'd pay somebody to go in and make an embossed, how they did that. And they would stamp every book. And some of them have foil. They put, they, they went, they, they, I don't think they do that as much anymore. They went crazy. And the problem with that is, though, it rubs the art off. You get little spots where it rubs the artwork. It looks great when they're brand new, shiny, and clean and fresh. But after you, you read it, it's half trashed, right? So I didn't really like it. but. Um, but they pay another artist to do that. So, um, <laughs> so when I moved to Denver, uh, I got uh, there w it was different. I still had some connections with New York. I was doing work for them, but I picked up a couple clients in, in Denver. One of them was a guy named Mark Conley. He worked for a magazine called Oil and Gas Investor Magazine, which is just as dull as it sounds <laughs> and really technical. And I didn't understand finance at all. But he'd give, he gave me a lot of work, and he was really fun to work with. And he would have to explain what the article was about so I could illustrate it, right? Because I didn't understand finance very well. But the um, fun thing about him was he would 
literally send me a manuscript. It was still being written sometimes. It was just messed up blocks and paragraphs all over the place and messed up. But he would have me read it. I would come up with a concept, get back, we'd talk about concepts, and then I would sometimes not even do a sketch, but he would, because I knew exactly how big it was. It was always a full page, and, the, and I knew the dimensions, and I would do it. Um, um, later, he, we did the sketching, but, but, the, but I shifted my style at that point. I was getting tired of, um, let me pull out some stuff. Uh, I was getting tired of um, just some of the limitations of oil, and I realized that a lot of these magazine pieces didn't pay as much, and I didn't want to spend two weeks doing a painting and get paid three hundred dollars for it, right? So I had to come up with something quicker and easier. So I started doing um, color pencil stuff, which I did a lot of in. Um, I, I, I kind of played with it in school, in college. I played around with different mediums, and one of them was color pencil, and uh, I liked the. Uh, the ease of, uh, if I can find the one I did for Mark, here's one I did for Mark Connolly here for Oil and Gas Investor. So, um, so this is an underpainting, it's basically just stained with acrylic. It's so thin that it just stains the paper, because if you go any thicker, then you can't put color pencil on top, it won't adhere to the paper anymore, because it's I've got a plastic coating, because acrylic's plastic, right? So I would just stain the paper, sometimes I would use oil paint to stain the paper, and then color pencil on top. But so you create a mid-tone. So this area would be kind of a, a, a mid-tone blue. And I would do all the whites and the darks with the pencil on top of that, which was kind of kind of fun. But it's a softer look. I'll pass this around to you. It's a little more stylized, a little simplified. It's not super realistic, but it's, you know. And I you did this for years, this, this technique here. And it was also small enough you could stick it in a FedEx package because you still had to ship them the art and send it to New York and it wouldn't cost, wherever it wouldn't cost you a fortune. You don't want to send something like that, a big, big painting, because it costs too much to FedEx them, right? So I would, so that's one reason I switched to this. And plus, you don't have to mix paint. You know, you can work for five minutes and go do something else and come back. You don't have to worry about paint drawing or anything. And it was, it was an interesting way to work. So, but um, this was, again, something to do with financial risk and I don't know, anyway. So, right, right in the way. So, in, in fact, if you look at this, if you tilt this, you can see a ghost image of some oil rigs down here on this bluff. Because later, I took it out and used it for stock illustration, which I'll talk about in a minute. So you could, you know, it sold it again. So, and always, they always give you the artwork back on these. They don't buy the art. They're only buying, well, some people do. But they're only buying the rights to use it. And usually it's for a specific purpose. And if they want to use it again, they often have to pay you again to use it. Uh, when you work for the Elders Church, no, they, they buy the rights. They don't pay you again. But other things, not everybody does, but some people do. So, so, um, but that's what I started doing. So I started shifting to this, and and and, and I had a lot of fun with it. And in the beginning, I loved illustration. I thought illustration was really fun, and I loved the the life. I loved the uh, just the whole process. I thought it was just fascinating and really really fun to work at. And um, um, and part of it was just working with different art directors and seeing your work published was really fun. Um, so I did that for quite a few years. Um, when I moved to LA, LA was frustrating. The, the art market in LA is weird. It's, um, it's a lot of it's in, it wrapped up with the entertainment business and just kind of strange. So and then I, moved, I only stayed there about a year and moved back to Salt Lake. When I moved back to Salt Lake, I started doing, I still had clients around different places, but I did a lot of work for the LDS church magazines. And they have a different requirement um, I, I did mostly this stuff with them. Um, there's a, I got a bunch here. I'll show some of these. Um, I did a number of. Uh, oh, here's what I'll, I'll show you this. So this is I did this illustrating an article by, who do you think? Uh, <laughs> but before, but way back, like I didn't even know who he was. This was like in the eight in the early '90s, and he was this guy. Is, this guy is a pilot, and he's a, you know, I, I didn't know who he was. So I bet it was something to do with flying. But anyway, again, this was a, so this was done for a double page spread. And then they would put the copy down here, but I only had to illustrate, obviously, the top part of this. Um, do you always keep passing these? Sure. Okay. Okay. But, um, but again, it's a softer look. One What's problem with them, these are oil, these are color, uh, color pencils on top of a really thin acrylic wash. So I put down a wash to tone the paper 
because otherwise you get a lot of graininess and white showing through because the paper has a texture. And so, and then I also would, so for example, I would go in, put a gold tone here, do the, the rendering with color pencil, and then go back over the top with more acrylic glazes, really thin, to kind of beef up some of those tones because it could be a little, a little weak. Color pencils are a little soft. So to get the darker parts, I would go back in and just add more, more paint with, with the acrylic. So you say the glazes, do you, what do you put well, it in to? I'm just saying, really, what I did was I would get like a really thin, watered down oh, water. acrylic and just glaze over the top. Let it dry, glaze it more if I needed it. Just keep doing it until it looks right. I could adjust it quite a bit. And then you could put more pencil on that. As long as you don't get too thick with the acrylic, right. you can keep adding pencil. But if you get too thick, then it stops absorbing the pencil. Yes. Were they watercolor pencils or wax? Just regular, just Prism regular wax pencils. Prismacolor? Yeah, just Prismacolor pencils, which I, and they're pretty good. You know, and they've got a huge range of colors. I think they're really fun to work with, so. Um, uh, are these all original, what you actually did? Yeah, these are, these, this is what I gave to the art director. This is what I drew, and then they photograph them. Or back then they started scanning. They put it on that scanner. But these are the originals? Those are the originals, yeah. That's the actual art, yeah. Right, so I would work on illustration board. It's fairly cheap, fairly lightweight, but it's tough enough to not warp too much when you paint on it, you know, so. And, uh, I don't feel it's like the texture. Well, there's a little bit of texture, and it's surprising. That's why you, when you look at this color pencil really close, you see a bit of a grain. That's the, that's the paper. But I like it a little bit so it'll catch the, you know, it's, it's, but it's a fairly smooth, it's a fairly smooth, it's called, I think it's cold press, I don't remember, it's not the rough one, but uh, um, let me, so here's a few, I'll pass these around, do I have the actual art for me? Oh yeah, here we go. This one I did a cover for Fran for Mother's Day, I'll pass these together, that's the art, and then this is how they printed it, that was uh, a while back, all of these, I haven't worked with a I haven't done any illustration for uh, at least five years. Uh, so. Did you put tape around there to mm -hmm. keep your edges crispy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crispy yeah. Just crispy keep it in there. You know, you can tap. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah, because and then this was smooth enough so you didn't have to find the the, the dips in the paper with the right. watercolor pencil. Right. So I, so I would never use watercolor paper or anything like that because it's just too too rough. Yeah, too. very very fine tooth. Unless you want that look, and some people do. I, I wanted it fairly smooth. Um, I don't think I have any art for this one. Um, this is another cover for Fran. Um, that, that might have been Mother's Day also. Is that May? May. Yeah. So I guess they're both Mother's Day. No. So, um, and they range. So, so, so another thing I was doing as I was work, working in color pencil was I was shifting again. I had a lot of. Um, heroes in illustration. I don't know if you guys know some of them, but uh, there was a guy named C.F. Payne that did caricatures and distorted kind of cool figures, faces, a lot of portraits. I loved what he was doing. And I was doing some of that. I'll pass, I'll show you some in a minute. <laughs> but when working for the clients, depend on how your style is, right? So when I was working for the church, it was fairly straightforward. They, they would allow some stylization, some abstraction, but they weren't real big on distortion. You know, I couldn't get away with too much. But so a lot of it's just really straightforward like this. It was a story about a kid with a, I don't know, I think there was a, it's one of those stories where somebody has a famous ball that's signed by somebody and the kid goes out and plays with it. That's what this was about. <laughs> <laughs> and you get grass stains on it and set, right? It's one of those. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so some of them, but I was also at the same time starting to do, where did I put, uh, oh no. Have her. Let's see. There should be. Uh oh. Where's my big? Yeah, I'm just gonna have uh, one. Oh, I didn't bring the. Oh, here it is. The texture makes. Oh, here we go. Okay. So I was also getting, like I said, getting into a, kind of a stylization, almost a caricature, cartoony look, like this one here. Much less realistic because what I like about working like this is you don't have to take a photograph. You can just make this up, right? Um, and I much preferred doing that because I got so tired of <coughs> trying to get you know the neighbor's kids to pose for this and that or whatever, right? It's just so tedious and get way back with my Polaroid, remember back then, before I had my digital camera. So, it, and, I, and I like the freedom of it. Like, I just love making things up. So, and you can get away, especially with a friend, with some stuff that's quite 
quite cartoony, um, and I, I really like that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, any more questions as I go? I'm going pretty fast. Was the compensation comparable mm -hmm. to what you're paying for? No. What you're being paid for the book covers? No. no. Was it was a little bit less? Yeah, <laughs> magazines for them, or except unless it's a cover, and then they pay a little bit of the cover. Um, but but it was steady. I mean, there was a time where I was doing. There was an art director at the, at the New Era that I worked with almost every month for a few years. And he paid me, and then I was sometimes getting. Sometimes I had more than the magazine. Plus, I was had other clients too, so it kept me. So, the, so the, what, as an illustrator, the thing I looked for more than anything was building a relationship with art directors. They trusted you, they want to use you again, right? So even if you're, and, and, and that's more important than being the best artist, right? If you're, if, you're, if you're consistent, they know what they're gonna get, right? And that's much more important to them than sometimes you're good, sometimes you're terrible, and, but you're a genius or whatever, right? You know, when you go to McDonald's, you're the one who you're genius. <laughs> exactly right. So they love consistency, and you got to be on time. You got to, you know what I mean. They they look for professionalism. So, and now as I as I'm work, painting, doing work for galleries and, and working and, and getting to know people that often it's the former illustrators that make that galleries love because they know how to deliver a product, a consistent product on time. And they know how to work with deadlines, and they, they, it's a different. It's, it's become it's a more professional approach than a lot of. I'm not saying artists aren't always professional, but sometimes they're not very professional. You know how it goes. So, um, but uh, but yeah, they, you know, and, and if, if they're calling you every month, you know, if they don't pay as much, so what, right? Because you got steady work, right? So, and that's and that's hard when you're freelancing. And I was just freelancing, and that's hard, especially when you. When I got married and, and had a kid, and yeah, man, freelancing, because you never know how much you're gonna make from month to month, right? That's hard, right? So <laughs> consistency, clients that want to use you again and again are really, really, really important. So you bend over backwards too. And that also means that they call you, you know, when you're ready to leave town for, for a trip and say, can you do this in three days? And you say, yes, of course I can do that in three days, right? Because you're on call, basically, which is, the downside of being a freelance illustrator is you got a lot of freedom, but you don't when they call you and want you to do something, because you generally, if you're like me, I needed the money, so I said, yes, of course, I'll get that in. So, does anybody remember, uh, you, is Utah Business Magazine still around? <coughs> yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. This was the first issue, the cover, okay? This was, remember, Joe Cannon. This is a caricature of Joe Cannon. He was the publisher. And Rod Decker. And Rod Decker gave an interview and that was incorporated in the first issue. I, I don't know, remember Joe Cannon was talking about his, his ideas for what he wanted the magazine to be, and Rod Decker was being Rod Decker. And um, so that was just kind of a caricature. So this is the kind of thing I could get away with. I loved doing if I wasn't working for somebody who was pretty conservative, right? These guys would allow me to get away with this, right? So that was kind of fun. I loved doing this kind of stuff. Um, and that actually won an award someplace because it's framed and I sent it out to California for I think the Society, do you remember the Society of Illustrators in New York? Um, maybe you guys don't know that big, it's, it's, it's a good, good group. And it was cool, and I lived in New York, you could go down and see their shows, and they had, I mean, all of your heroes would be on the wall, you could go up and look at their art, it was really fun. LA had a group similar for a while, and that's what this is, check out, so that one there. Um, so that style I really got into, I really enjoyed working in that kind of stylized, caricaturized, whatever you want to put it, look. Um, this is another one that's kind of that way. Um, remember the movie Glory? About the black soldiers in the Civil War that were fighting for the North. Um, they made a movie. Um, this was for Scholastic Magazine. They had a story about the same thing, just talking about those soldiers. And so I had to look up, you know, some of the, try to get the swords and everything as as close as I could, but it was really zoomed in and cropped in really tight and, and stylized and distorted just a bit, as much as I could get away with, right? So, yeah, I liked that one. So, that, I did that for quite a while. Um, I, for a while, I was doing, um, 
somebody called me from a group, it was, they were doing stock illustration, I'd never heard of them. And I said, I don't know, but I found out one of my friends was doing it. And so I checked into it, and stock illustration is just like stock photography, where you can go and you can find an image that you want to use for something, and you pay them, and you get the right to use it for something. So if you want a photograph of Mount Tipanogos with the sun hitting it or whatever, you can find one and pay somebody, and you can use it for your magazine or whatever. Same thing with illustration. They were presenting images that anybody could buy the rights to for a specific purpose. And so I started doing that for a while. Um, and <clears throat> it's pretty good. I mean, they would do all the marketing, everything, and send you a check for half of it, right? It was good. Um, and they could sell the same thing 20, 30, whatever times, right? The same image. So, but what, you but what I found was, again, it was kind of limited <laughs> in that um, it had to be kind of specific, but not too specific, right? So like that one I had of the guy in the riding the wave, Whoever that one was, right? Does anybody got that one? That one there, right. So this one here, um, this was done for a magazine. I got, it back. I got it back and then I, since I owned the rights to it still, then I could turn around and give it to the stock illustration company. I took out the rigs, so it'd be less specific because nobody was gonna want oil rigs on their bluff back here if they're writing about something else. But it's still enough about money, <laughs> A lot of people could use it, but it's not too specific, so that it can be used. So, so you try to walk that line between general, you know, universal and specific enough to make, you know what I mean. So that that was kind of tricky. It was kind of fun. Um, did anybody else? Did, that, did that get all? Do you want to see that still? Or did that get? Is it okay? Is it going this way? Here, I'll take it back. What's that? What's that? Oh, I'll bring it back. Okay. So so that then again this one. So what do you see here? Right. So it's just interest, you know. Would you rather be the people paying interest or the people <laughs> living off interest and earning interest, right? Sure, sure. So it's that kind of thing. You want to show something that somebody, and a lot of, it was used in all kinds of applications, but. So I had to come up with ideas, right? This was another one I did for stock illustration. This one here, right? It's just teamwork and, you know. Um, this one, I think, was done for the church, I think, but I ended up using it for redoing it or something. It was just a bird. But here, you know, mergers, working together, same kind of stuff, really business oriented. I did a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and it was, it, do you want to see these? Hey, I think my husband got some of these magazines. I almost remember this on a magazine, in a magazine yeah, my husband got. It probably was, it was around. And, and they used them and they still do. I mean, they kind of died out. Because they had a lot of competition from uh, when they first started, they it was great. I have a friend that just made a literal fortune off it, but um, I wasn't quite as quick as him, and I as he was, and it took me a while to get into it and build up my image, my my image bank, and and then it started to fall apart because they had really a tough competition from China and different places that would just sell them dirt cheap. So it's still there. I made some money last year from it, but. Not like it was, so, but it's nice because once you give them the image, you don't have to do anything and they just give you a deposit now and then you go, oh, that's nice, thank you, right? It's kind of fun. But I never rarely saw where they went, so I know they were in, the, uh, once in a while I would see one, but they could, but there's so many publications out there. Even now, if you think everything's online, there's a lot of trade publications that um, just all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's medical publications and financial and there's just so many a lot of them are still published in paper so or they need them for their online you know versions they need they still need art um, yes what's the story Have you told us? I Who can't remember I don't remember but it obviously had something to do with financial risk okay. yeah and it like I said that was for a guy in Denver it was oil and gas investor magazine I don't remember the specifics of the story but I'm just assuming that it had to do with, you know, I mean, oil and gas is kind of a risky investment, right? They, they lose, they went, make and lose millions, right? But so it can be, if you, if you, if you sink the wrong well, you're going to lose money, right? So it, it was something to do with that. Um, any questions on any of that? Yes. I sold a few. Um, actually, for, I did a job for, um, for, uh, Utah business, and it was something about, 
it was a Utah business fund who went into, it, it made some kind of connection with, oh, who's the guy that's, that's he's super rich, um, the Hathaway, Berkshire Hathaway, what's his name? Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. So it was Warren Buffett and somebody from Utah, and they were making some kind of a um, merger something. I don't remember the guy's name, and I did a caricature kind of like this one of the two of them. And they bought it, they, they, the Utah business bought it and gave it to that particular business. Uh, Bill Child and R.C. Willey? Could have been, because I remember, it did have something to do with furniture <coughs> and appliances. Bill Child. Probably was, yeah, probably was. So I think they gifted that to him. So sometimes they'll buy them, you know, or sometimes the people that, uh, I, I have tons I've given away, like the people that model for them. If I got the neighborhood kids to model for something, I'll just give it to them when they get done with it, because I don't pay them when they model. So give them cookies or something. My wife will make cookies for them. But, but they usually just love to do it because it's so much fun because then they get to see themselves in a magazine, right? So it's, it, that's kind of fun. Um, um, okay, so the whole point of all this is as, as, as I've gone through life, art has meant different things and I've used different approaches to art over the years. I would never go back and paint a book cover like that now. I just have no interest in it. You know, I just, uh, when, I, when I went to New York and visited I spoke about a couple I visited, the Gerbers, and she drew, uh, he, she painted and he drew. Interesting thing, when I was there, he pulled out a book he had just purchased. It was this big, nice art book on the Impressionists, right? And he'd been practicing painting in an Impressionist style. He was so proud of it, and I was just like, I was totally uninterested because I was so focused on the illustration. I was looking at her stuff, and I was much more, my mind was there, but now I'm totally flipped. I don't care about illustration anymore. Right? I find it boring, for the most part. It can be nice, but I have no interest in it, like I did, no passion for it. And in the beginning, I loved it, it was just fun, right? But so things change, right? And some, sometimes your technique, your medium, your style will change to go with whatever you need, whatever you're working on, right? At least for me. So, um, um, and then I've been painting for the last few years. Before I get into showing some paintings, um, let me, As I, when I got to Utah, I worked for, I, I was really, I got to a point where I was really, really busy with illustration. Oh, I was working for another guy, so let me mention him. I was doing stock illustrations. I was doing illustrations for a lot of magazines. Am I talking too fast? My wife says, I need to slow down. I get kind of hyper sometimes. So, um, and I was doing, working for a guy in North Salt Lake that has a company called Monster Mural. And what he does is he prints these, it's really unique. He prints these big, on big sheets of paper, they're like the, that big, you know, the rolls that are about that wide, either on paper or canvas. He prints black and white line art that then people color in. So he gives them either crayons to color it in or he gives them paint to color it in and they can be done on canvas and they're sold to arts festivals and people's parties for their kids. And there's an artist that he works with that does caricatures really well. And so she would draw caricatures of whoever they wanted. And I would do all the buildings and the trees and the background stuff because sometimes it was for an opening of a new building for a company or something, right? So we worked together with him. And he would combine it all in his computer and create these images and, and send them out. And I was working for him quite a bit. Uh, um, those were kind of fun. I mean, we did, we did a whole series for the Miami Dolphins one time. I don't know what they're using for, some kind of parties for their kids, employees' kids. Um, and, but, you know, it was just, it was kind of fun. I did one for, we did one for the Philadelphia Museum of Art. They were doing some retrospective on Salvador <coughs> Dali. So I had to draw this big cake with candles because it was a birthday party for their museum or something. And the cake was melting when I was there. <laughs> that was kind of fun. That, and that, that's the building where, in Rocky, where he runs up the steps. Remember in the movie Rocky where he's jogging and he runs up the steps and back? That's at that same museum. Anyway. So fun stuff, that was kind of fun. So I was doing a lot, a lot of stuff, but I was getting kind of burned out and really not enjoying it. And just it got to the point where it was like pulling teeth to, to produce an illustration. And this style, this pencil style, takes a long time. Even though it's faster than oil paint, for me it, it's pretty tedious, especially if you have to cover a big area with pencils. It's like, it can take forever and ever. And I just got burned out on it, yes. You can do that now on a computer. You could do it. And I never wanted to go computer. I just don't like computers. 
don't like working on them. I don't like keyboards, and I like yes. Do you use airbrush? I no, I never did. No, and that that's another way to speed things up. But uh, I I just always liked, and and so when illustration started changing and things went more digital, I was getting kind of tired of it. 2008 hit, stock illustration took a dive. The church started using, they restructured and you started stopped using so much art. Things just sort of, and so I was kind of sick of it anyway and I started looking around for other things and um, I knew I couldn't make enough money selling paintings at that point to just quit working and do that. So I ended, actually ended up going and, um, so I started working at a school, so now I teach art. Um, my wife, my, our son was going to a charter school and my wife was working there as an aide, and um, do, you, do you guys know John Barry, Utah painter, abstract? No? Okay, I'll show you some of his stuff in a minute. His wife was working there, and me and John were really good friends. We'd go out painting all the time, and, and he said, you could sub. He said, I go in there and sub sometimes and make, make okay money, right? So I started subbing, and then I started working. Anyway, it just worked into, so now I teach um, <clears throat> middle school, I teach ceramics and drawing, and, and then a lot of the younger grades too. So I teach uh, pretty much all day long. And I also fill out a few of my hours with special ed classes with a small group of kids for that. So I do that uh, now and then I paint on the weekends or in the summer or whenever. And uh, working as a teacher gives you a lot of time off actually. So, And I really want to paint by the time the weekend comes. You know, but have you ever had where you just, you're tired of painting and you know, that's, this, this makes me, I'm really always ready to paint when I get to paint. So that's a good, that's a good thing. I'm excited and ready to go. Um, I've tried to, so I'm trying to build a painting career that when I retire in a few years that I can hopefully make enough money to supplement my social security and all of that, right, and my IRAs and all that stuff, so. Um, but that's a slow build, it's a process, you know, selling at galleries is interesting and and it's, it's inconsistent, so. Some people make really good money at it, but, um, so that's my goal. Um, <coughs> but, so with painting, I'm gonna run through some slides first. I wanna show you something that, um, this is, I show this to my sixth graders. And I'm gonna ask you a question I ask them, okay? So, so let me see if I can get this to work. And I'll, uh, I know this slides somehow. And, oh, there we go, okay, so that should be, and did it turn off? Maybe on standby or something. Standby, okay. See if we can get this to work. I am low in technological ability. So if anybody's good at this, I like this. I'm just going to try this. You need the same thing underneath you. Yeah, well, it'll. I'll put this up here. I got this. Okay, so I think I can roll this. Okay, I can. It's not very bright, though, is it? It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter? Okay. Can we see that? Okay. And it's going to pull up. If this is slow. This is a really, not the best computer. It's a laptop here. But I think it'll work. And hopefully this is, ah, it's going to work. Aha. Good. Okay. Now I have to sit there and think about <laughs> roll my mouse. Okay. So, um, so I love this at school. I can walk around the room and click and talk and make sure they're not back there being bad. <laughs> So, so I find that here's some artists. So um, I'm going to show you some artists. Anybody know who this artist is right away? Right off the bat, Van Gogh and Mozart. Okay, anybody got any more guesses? So the left one is Picasso. They're both the same artists. So they're both Picasso. Yeah. Okay. So they're both Picasso. Um, this is his daughter here. here. That's his photo portrait of his dad. Um, he actually was really good at academic drawing. He could draw really well. Um, this is some more that he did. Uh, that's pretty realistic, sensitive drawings. Uh, most of these were, some of these were done when he was really young, like just a teenager. He was quite gifted. Um, then, of course, he went more into this, and eventually into this. So I teach a week on cubism to my sixth graders, and we talk, we look at this stuff first, okay? And, and so I say, why would somebody who can draw like that choose on purpose to do this. What do you think? According to him, it took him a couple of years to paint like a master's, but a lifetime to paint like a child. Okay. 
Okay, but why would he want a family of child? What do you guys think? Just for fun. For, for what? For fun. For fun, exactly, right? Yeah, and he wanted something different. He was, and nobody had done this stuff at this point, right? So it was, I mean, it's, it's old hat now, right? You know? But um, so when I ask the kids, I get, it, they, some of them just don't have a clue. And, and, and surprisingly, there's a few of them that love puberty. Um, and, but most of them don't like it. Um, because with kids that age, um, and with even with a lot of us, it's, we, it's all about creating a realistic, the more realistic you can make it, the better it is, right? So they're not thinking composition, they're not thinking, any, they're thinking, it, how real does it look, right? And so this is like foreign to them, like, what are you doing, right? And some of them get it, some of them don't. But anyway, so I always run through that and, and just say, if you could do that, why would you do this? And for fun, right? This is, anybody know this one? This is Kandinsky. When he, when he started out, he also, <laughs> worked in realism for a while, and he, but it was pre-stylized, right? It wasn't like, it was a, I mean, it's kind of kind of simplified and, and cartoony, but it's, it's still realism, right? And then he would, then he moved into where it was much more abstract, but they're still symbols. You can see um, castles and the horse, the rider on a horse, and there's often a dragon and a, St. Peter, I think it is fighting him, or something. St. Michael, I don't know what it is. Some saint is fighting him. It's often in movies. Um, and then it got to this point, where there's just absolutely nothing recognizable anymore, right? And that's really rare. It's not like it's just like no color. Really. But and that's a big painting. Um, but it's just it's cool. And nobody had done anything like this, right? This was like back then. This was like rev blowing people's minds. It was revolutionary, and a lot of people just hated it. And again, the kids at school, some of them absolutely hate this. And that's okay, right? I don't care, right? I'm just saying, why would somebody do that, right? But it, you know, um, here's um, a painter named Mondrian. Mondrian, when he, he he started out also doing you know realism. Here's a tree. It's not super realistic, but it, you can tell it's a tree, right? Here's another version of a tree. Here's another version of a tree. <laughs> Mondrian later in life, he'll recognize this. He became famous for that. That's Mondrian. He was the one that did the, you know, the primary color squares, right? If you've ever seen, you ever seen one of these in real life? They're just like that. They're just kind of, they're nice, but it's like, but it, it would be kind of boring if somebody did that now. It has been done. But back then, nobody had ever done it, so it was really cool. Again, but why would you do that if you could do, you know, something like that? You know, why would you do that? Right? Um, um, here is one of my famous favorite uh, uh, Utah paint, uh, American painters. He was uh, his name was Richard Divencorn. Have you heard of Richard Divencorn? Yeah. He started out teaching right after World War II, and the big thing then was abstract expressionism. And if you were anybody to be taken seriously, that's what you did. You didn't paint realism because they just thought you, you know, they thought you were not good. You're just criminal. You know, very art people. Whatever they think is in, then that's what you have to do. But he started out, he did, and they're beautiful. He did a lot of these. They're beautiful paintings. Um, and later then he flipped, went into realism. Now they're not, again, not strict realism, but it's, it's based on a landscape. It's a landscape. Now here's a city in uh, California, Sweet. That's just one of his more famous ones. It's a fabulous landscape. Um, and again, people, he, he painted for a number of years, he did, and they're beautifully designed. I mean, I love these. This is shades, it's just gorgeous. I think it's even the colors are beautiful. It's realism, but it's realism with a tweak, right? And for me that that's my sweet spot. I love that that somewhere between realism and abstraction, there's all kinds of room in there and, and, and it can be really fun. It's hard to find it so it works perfectly for you know, but this is I mean I love it. To me that's my favorite thing about art is finding that a way to tweak realism so you can have fun, right? Yeah. So for me, that's more fun. If I were to paint that realistically, I would, I would not like it, personally. And then he went back to abstraction later in his life and did this whole series called um, Ocean Park. And these are great, big, beautiful paintings um, of just this real strict kind of. They're not. I mean, they're they're scrubby, but they're broken into pretty, you know, 
geometric shapes. Uh, he did this for a long, long time too. So why would he do that? He went from that, abstraction, to realism, back to that. Anyway, um, here's John Barry. John Barry was a friend of mine, lives, uh, is a friend of mine, lives, uh, lives in St. George now. He, um, is, we used to go out painting a lot. We used to go out playing every day. I spent uh, one whole, one year basically painting plein air with John, and that's when I, uh, I learned so much about painting just from doing it repeatedly over and over. And you learn, I don't know, how many, you guys, I've heard you go out and paint, right? Plein air? Did you read that? How many of you guys learn a lot when you plant painting also? Colors. Yeah, colors, you see colors like really quickly. And, it, and it's just, you'll, you can learn so much from painting also. It's frustrating and hard sometimes. But it's, um, so and now I don't think that was a plain air painting, but he, but he did, we, and I learned so much that year. I loved it, it was really good. And I, I've kept doing it ever since. I love playing plain air. Um, this is what he was doing a few years ago. Um, and he, then he started, a little more into abstraction. You can tell what it is. It's mountains and hills, but it's uh, abstract. It's broken up into, you get, can you still work it? Oh, it slipped down here. Okay, sorry. Can you still hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Right, just, I guess this bit is not helping with that. Um, so, again, he's just playing with it. And that, to me, that's what's fun about it. He's just playing with it, having fun with it. But then he got tired of this, and he just wasn't going where he wanted it to go. And now, this is what he's and these are huge. I mean, some of them are like as big as that screen right there. They're big. I mean, they're bigger than, you know, it's, it's, I mean, this, I don't, they're like, you know, they're, they're big, they're big paintings, and, and they're beautiful. These don't do them justice. They're gorgeous paintings, right? You know, and I like them. Right? He's, he's happy doing it. But he says he's been doing it for years, and I think he's, I get tired. I can't do pure abstraction, because I get so analytical. I get lost, I'm like, wait, I, can, you know, I, I never know when it's done. It's hard for me to do this. I, I, I have to have something to ground me in reality a little bit, at least, and then I can take it sort of to abstraction, but not, I can't go all the way. It's hard for me to do that. So, but, but he has, and he's been really successful at it. He's got galleries, and uh, anyway, he's, he's doing really well. So um, this is another friend, Rob Colvin, went to USU. He had a really successful illustration for you. We were just wondering, is he one of the guys that you went back to North Carolina? No, no, actually, no. But uh, he ended up in, 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 in he went to Boston, he Rob did. And he did really, really well in illustration. So he had a style that was kind of, it's kind of a Cuba style, right? Yeah. Kind of a soft Cuba style. And the people were the same way, and, and it just fit right in with the, kind of the, the mood, and, and he did really well with stock illustration. And, but now he does this. So again, it, it's, a, it's just what is working for him and why he wants to do it. So as I moved into painting, um, when I, uh, let me pass this one around. This was, so I was trying to do paintings that were um, um, kind of, oh, let's, here we go, let's, let's just, kind of like, This kind of stylized, kind of a character, you know, a little bit not mm -hmm. quite, not too strict realism, but based on realism, just kind of being playful and fun. And I was doing this kind of stuff, right? Um, I'm going to pass this around. Just let you look at the surface of it. Is that's that, that one called the Three Gossips? That's the Three Gossips down in uh, Arches. Yeah, it's down in Arches. Um, and I did that for quite a while, and I had some success. I was in the Springville show, I was in the Science Bank show, I was, you know, and I won some awards, I saw paintings, but it never, it never really, something wasn't working, right? And I struggled, and I, and I kept painting, and I'll run through some of them here. I mean, bad again, these are all going kind of red, but that's okay. Again, it's just kind of a simplified, stylized, That's a great big one. Um, uh, okay, so that again, kind of stylized, simplified, but stylized. Um, and they're 
fun. But what I found was some people got it immediately, and other people would look at it and say, well, they, they, they would think like, it's like I'm trying to draw a realistic movie, but I can't quite do it. <laughs> they didn't get what I, they didn't get it, right? And so I was frustrated, like, no, I'm not trying to be realistic. I'm trying to be somewhere in between, anyway, you know, whatever. So it's just, so, so it sort of worked and sort of didn't. Uh, here's a few more, you can see up close. Um, all right, so that was a big one. That's <laughs> yeah, that's actually a rock down in Arches, but I stylized the heck out of it. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So that's a big, that's a big three foot by four foot painting, and it's hanging in that uh, building up on. Anyway, it's a dental place that's associated with it. Must have made issue with one of those. So, um, okay. So, all right. So now we have a. Okay. So now, now a few years ago, I went to. So I'm going to pass this one around so you can see. That's a so that's a red rock painting there. And here's another red rock painting. This is what I'm doing now. I'm working with palette knives, and um, and so you can feel the you can see the difference. This is dry enough; you can touch it. Um, but this is kind of what I'm doing, and why I'm doing this is because well, I'll talk about it. But just pass it around, just kind of look at it, and you compare that surface with that surface. Um, the composition is not any better. It's a very similar to what I was doing before, but. It's, there's something that, anyway, I'm getting here. So, so now, I, that's a fairly small one. Um, I've got my mouse there. Um, this is a picture made by Tim. And again, are these colors? I don't know. Oh, never mind. It's a bad, it's a bad cheap computer. Can I ask a question? Yes. Do people nowadays, like, steer away from realism? They like Not necessarily. People like everything. There's, there's a room for, you know, I think there's room for any kind of, any kind of art you want to make. A lot of people love realism. I mean, some people, it just depends. I, to me, it's not as fulfilling to go super realistic. I find it's much more fun and, and satisfying to go somewhere just a step off from it. You know what I mean? Kind of like this. So, so this is a tree and reflections, but it's just, just, just. Yeah. What's the time frame when you painted it? Versus that one, which I like much better. And this is. I do too. And so I, so what happened was I, I, I went down to, uh, I was, like I said, I was doing this, but I wasn't quite getting what I wanted to do. But um, I took a trip down to Phoenix. My parents live in Sun City West. And when I go down there, sometimes I'll go to Scottsdale to look at the galleries. And uh, for some reason, I just saw, I happened to see some palette knife things that I really liked. And I had some friends that were doing palette knife, but I'd never really taken it seriously. I thought, oh, what's the point, right? But I tried it, and I found I just loved it because it forces me, it's clumsy, but it is, and I use the biggest trowel I can use, right? The biggest tool possible to paint with because it keeps me from getting fussy and getting precious about little details and things, and I just get big strokes and big textures and big big shapes and focusing more on that, right? And that works, it helps me to get where I want to go, so that's what I started doing. Um, I've just, and that's only been about four or five years, yeah. Do you use any gels or? No, I just go straight out of the tube. It's just, uh, but I'll buy some paint. Some you can buy cheaper paint. I use that. Uh, you ever use that Gamblin 1980 paint? That's good paint and it's cheap. That's pretty good quality paint. I think their their color is good. Like they're really good. So I'll use that a lot. Just what, what kind did you say? Gamblin. Gamblin 1980. It's a student. It's a cheaper version, but they're really good. Or I'll use other, other I use beach rag, like but I don't go for the really super expensive paint. You don't need that. Anyway, so this is, I'm gonna pass this one around. See, you're gonna know, these colors are terrible. I'm sorry, I apologize. But that's this one here. Let me pass that around. I brought that one. I brought a few. Um, <laughs> could be a projector is. too. <laughs> could be a combination, yeah. So here's the painting. But as you see this, and this is a, I just painted this last fall up in Cache Valley. <coughs> Plain air. This is a plain air piece, so that's probably two hours or less. They go pretty quick, but um, um, that's so. Um, 
Um, that's one I just who sold that one. I think. That was um, San Rafael Square um, <coughs> Assembly Hall. Piece. Guess I said that there. Yeah. Are these in oil or? These are in oil. <coughs> I I don't like to sell. Does anybody like to sell? I do. <laughs> I, we did it in school. Like, we, our, and my illustration class in college was great. It was Glenn Edwards. And John Anderson ran, and uh, you guys know Glenn Edwards. He paints a lot of Western cowboys, Indians, horses. He's really well, he's dead now, but he, but he was really good. But that's how we did in class was painting. We drew every Friday for hours from a model, and we drew and painted in acrylic, and just taught us how to paint skills, right? Just basic skills, which was great. Um, but uh, I, acrylic, I never liked it either. I didn't like it. Like it. Hard to blend blends. Uh, yeah, I've seen people make it work. I can't. I can't never figure it out. So anyways, yeah, that one's done. That's a little plein air piece. Uh, that's a little plein air piece we did last summer. Here's some close-ups. So it's just about getting those. So I'm just breaking things into shapes and colors and patches, you know. And so, and it's not really even a tree, right? But it is a tree, right? So it's just shapes. It's just shapes and colors, right? So you can tell it's a tree, right? Um, give me that one. That's one I just did. Uh, and that's of uh, Zion Canyon. Back when you, if you climb up at the end, this is uh, the end of landing is somewhere over here. That's the observation point at the very end. I, don't, I think that trail is closed now. Yeah. I went up there a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, and it's a beautiful, it's a long hike, right? I'm getting too old for that, but it was good, yeah, it was good. But it's a beautiful view, and then I've taken it from that, yes. So is this kind of random that people are complaining that it's not realistic? Because it's obviously not. Like no, no, the, apparently this this is a David Erickson's uh, gallery. Apparently people really like it, but nobody's bought it yet. Cool. What yeah. kind of board is this? What's that? That's just um, just a commercial. There's a place called um, Raymar Art. There's a little panel on the back that you can see the tag. Oh wait, maybe that one is. Some of these I made myself on beautiful board. Yeah, it is right here, right here in the back. So these are, they're I like them because they don't warp, and they make them either with foam core. I don't know if they make this, but this is on, on some kind of particle board, but they don't warp. They're good. I like them. Can you bake them? Bake them? Yeah. I don't know. Like to dry them faster? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, to get certain textures, uh, when you want the outer layer to dry, but not the inner. You could try it. I don't know. Yeah. But on on normal canvas boards, you can, but I don't know if, if the material will. Yeah. Again, it's it's kind of a particle board, so uh, whatever you could do with a particle board might. paint a lot with uh, Brad Tier, don't you? Brad Tier, and he paints in a real big, just super big place. He just doesn't sell that far from Kansas. It's <laughs> crazy. He'll go through. He'll go through on some of his big paintings a couple hundred dollars a week. It's crazy. I don't. I don't do that. But there's another little one. Um, there's one up on Sardine Canyon. Had to get a close up of it. So I'm just trying to. It's almost like. Um, You know, Cezanne, how he gets those patches, you know what I mean? I like, it's, 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 it's that kind of a feel. This is one I just did a couple weeks ago, early spring, down, down around the south end of Cache Valley. Here's one. I'm going to ask you guys a question in a minute, because i got some compositional questions on this. I want to see what you guys tell me. Uh, here's one I did. Uh, I don't usually do these river scenes like this, but this is one I really enjoyed, of uh, Blacksmith Fork River, early spring. Before the leaves fully came out, um, <clears throat> but um, we're about out of. I don't know how long you guys want to go, but I'm about done. So uh, again, just up close. I love this stuff. It's really fun. So basically, my my philosophy is if I'm enjoying it, hopefully other people are enjoying it. And I seem to find people like. I, I want it to look like an object. Right? I don't want it to be like the, like the one of the three gossips. I think it's a fine painting, but when you get up close, you're not rewarded the same way as you are with this, because it's got such a smooth surface that, and, and I didn't used to be that way, because I did illustrations for years, and they don't, surface doesn't matter, you know, it's just it's a photograph, and, you know. But when I'm doing paintings, you know, I, 
there's something more tangible about this, more physical people, it's more appealing, and I've got, I got much better response from this than I did from the other stuff. So I'm getting better response and selling better. So yeah, there's one I sold last spring. Again, again, it's not a tree, it's just a blob of paint, right? But it's a tree, right? So, um, that one is a Snow Canyon. If you went down to Snow Canyon to the Overlook, and that's looking north instead of into the canyon, but right there on the edge of Snow Canyon. And somebody, a friend of mine bought that, and, and she had gone down there. Sometimes people make the con really interesting connections with paintings. Her husband passed away. And the last trip they went on together was to Snow Canyon, and they went up there to this place, and so you know she had that painting. So that's kind of cool to see that. I did a painting of that exact same did you really? scene down there. Really, looking north right there. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I love these. I love these. These um, the Navajo Canyon, the Navajo sandstone, that that cool, the almost like caramel color and stuff, right? But again, to me, it's a lot of it is just about these little dabs and dashes and. Playful with just the swoosh of paint with clouds. I just find it fun. It's really, really fun. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea of specific shape of the outline? Oh, I try all kinds of them. But I have two or three that I like a lot. Just the typical. But my favorite one is the top creepy one. Actually, I bought a trowel for some time. I was really into a trowel. <laughs> but I didn't go big enough for that. But. So I usually pretty big. I have a few little ones. But yeah, I've tried a number of size, different shapes. But and they make thousands of them, not thousands of them, but dozens and dozens of different kinds of shapes. But again, it's about, you know, a lot of stuff is about the composition, but within that composition are lots of little tiny compositions, right? lots of little shapes. So I really pay attention to my shapes, colors, <coughs> patterns. Um, so I'm going to ask you, um, any questions on any of these? Yes. Do you sketch it out first on these palette ones, or do you just When I'm plain air, I, sometimes I'll do a really quick pencil sketch just underneath and then just start knocking, blocking it in and not a lot. Composition comes pretty easy to me so I don't fuss with it. I used to really, really, really just obsess with it but I don't so much anymore because you can always just scrape it and move it. And like if you're working here, right, you know, and the trees are too high, you just scrape them off and move them down. <laughs> it's not, it's pretty easy to adjust with, with this stuff, yeah. yeah. How long does it take for a painting to dry? <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks when they're, when it's thick like this, depending on the white and different colors. Some colors are really, really slow. But, you know, usually, you know, a couple, two or three weeks, a month at the most. Um, not really? too long. You don't use dryer? I don't use any dryer. I don't use anything. I just go straight out of the tube and paint. And if I'm outside, I don't like to paint when it's cold. On a warm day, it's too wet anyway because the oil warms up and that linseed oil in the paint. And you're just it's like it gets really juicy, you know. It's <laughs> almost too much sometimes. <laughs> but um, anyway, so let me turn this off, and um, I got one I'm going to pass around. Did I just turn it off like right here? Do you, do you use yeah. the oil? I don't. Do you, do you I don't use. I don't use any medium. I used two times. Two times. Here you go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I used to when I was doing these uh, illustrations because I wanted them to dry quicker. I would do, I used several different kinds of drying mediums and, and they help a lot. Uh, but I don't like the smell of them if I'm inside. And that's another good thing about palette knives. You just wipe off when you're done. You don't have to like, get the turpentine out. And, you <laughs> <laughs> and you can, and the colors, man. You can go on, you can take a palette knife and get it full of paint just slide over the top of that, and it won't even pick a paint in there. If you do it right, you won't pick any. You can you can do these, or you can drag it and make it blend in and create these really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. Like color on two and just piercing awesome things. You don't know what's going to come. No, it's very spontaneous. And that way, because I go out painting a lot with my brother who does watercolor, and he started doing some palette knife because it's the spontaneity that palette knife gives you is not the same as the spontaneity in watercolor, which is a totally different, it's a beautiful, watery thing. But this gives you the chance to create a lot of spontaneous effects that, that he really likes to, and I really like too. So it's just, it, it's a lot of it's just the pressure of the knife. Uh, 
there's all kinds of different things. But, but, but I wanted to ask you guys, okay, so I have two or three, and I asked my friend Brad Tier about this too, compositional problems with this that I'm gonna fix. Because often I'll get them home, and I'm not a purist, unless I'm doing a plein air competition or something. I'll take them home, and if I wanna work on them, I'll work on them at home a little bit too. So, um, anybody see anything here that, uh, can anybody see it? Or is it uh, how about, should I put it up here? Is that better or worse? Better. Okay. If you slide that back a little bit. Yeah, I'll roll this back if I can do that without knocking it. So you're not happy with this painting because there's a composition Well, I'm happy with it, but I, there's a couple things I want to improve. I think a few simple changes want to improve. Left side. But yes. What do you do? There's a lot of repetition in your shapes. Okay. Yeah. The trees. Like, uh, the trees. trees the right. The three peaks. The three right. Peaks. Right. 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 Yeah. Do that. 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 I try to avoid shapes that are too repetitive. That one and that one are pretty close. Yeah. That's not what bothers me, but yeah, because <laughs> the top is because the because the, the top is different, so I don't think about that. Uh, this shape kind of bothers me because it's too round, maybe. But <coughs> maybe the right. alternating colors is like A B A B A B. Right here, right here, 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 right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's one of my issues. Is this fan of trees? Okay, I think it needs a different green, <coughs> and then I don't need a, a mid tone between. I think get enough mid-tone between this bright and this dark. Yeah. Something to break up their little, their little straight across. They could have some, a little better. more variety there. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking the top of the mountain is besides those double peaks, mm -hmm. they're too flat. I mean, they're, they're more. Right. Well, to me, it's, it's the Wellsvilles. They're pretty, but yeah, you're, you're right. They do that for a long ways, but yeah. but yeah, no, you're right. So. Okay, anything else? Yeah, There's something so specific. Yeah. There's a couple of really specific things. The sky's not bad. Um, the right the center. The right. That bothers you the line in the middle? Okay, yeah. That left side, it just kind of, and I don't here, like yeah, it. Over here, over here. Yeah. What yeah. are you doing here? Right there at the mountain. Is that too straighter? I didn't know there was a <laughs> no, no, it's okay because it's like, I'm looking for one. So what's really funny is, uh, so I actually like this, but I, I'm a little puzzled about what's going on here. Okay, so, and it doesn't, yeah, exactly. So so I take it over, and, I, and what's funny is I'll take it over, and I'll go to my friend Brad's here, and he'll ask me for a critique on one of his, and I'll critique it. And, uh, we see totally different things. Every, everybody's going to see, but but what, so whatever. But sometimes they're the same, and there's a couple things we both found on this that bother both of us, and nobody's hit on it yet. Well, except this. But this, I like that the colors. Are, I, yeah. I like that part. What bothered me right here? Can anybody see what's right here? Yeah, yeah a little. Why does that bother? Like that irregular. Well, edge. it's pointing me out of things. Dragging out. This is the brightest and darkest thing, and there's such an intense contrast here. That's it's right, right on the edge, and it's just taking you off. I think so. I think I'll soften this a little bit, this whole thing. This was just kind of a little dirt gully, the kind of almost like the part of a canal there that mm -hmm. went weeds and it's, it, it can be whatever. But it's, it's unfocused it. enough, it doesn't drag me out, it pulls yeah. me towards So it's pulling me around, yeah. yeah. So, okay. And there's one other thing that I'm really bothered by this stroke right here. Oh. It's because it's, it's so, it's, it, it, it's, uh, most of the other ones are, not as angular, not as um, it it's just a, it's just a straight line. It's a just a, the same thickness all the way across. I'm gonna just break it up somehow. It's a little bit strong right there, but other than that, I'm okay with it. You know? But Brad was saying, oh, there's something. I don't know what all he was saying. He didn't like this V down here. I got no problems with that V. But he thought he this was he thought this was a bad shape, and you know, so it's, everybody looks at something and we see something different, right? So that's okay. And and. But what do you do, right? You just you follow your own heart and do the best you can, and hopefully, yeah, yeah. Could you scrape it off there? Oh yeah. yeah. Dry? Well, I can. It's pretty dry, but it's soft enough that I can, I can go over. I can, I can do a little bit of work on it. But I mean, it's, have, it's not you thick have enough. Limit that before it gets too dry. That you it's too dry to. I can actually go in and scrape with this board. It's hard to do on the canvas. You can oh, get yeah, some of it out. Just put a little color over the top, but you need just a tree or two down a little bit. So yeah, so um, you can do different things. I have found recently uh, there's a type of palette knife that's it's it's made out of vinyl, 
You've seen those? And some people paint just with those. And they're shaped like palette knives, but they're like a spatula. They're soft, but they're not too soft. But what oh, you can do, so. you can go over a hard, so if you were to take a palette knife and try to paint over this, it would be all broken because it would catch all the little hard edges, right? Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't smooth, it wouldn't go across. But you can take that, those ones with vinyl, and it kind of conforms to the surface underneath and you can kind of spread over it. Mm -hmm. You can actually get away with it quite a bit. You can do a lot of on top and keep it looking fresh. Because you want it, you, whatever you do on top, you want it to look fresh, right? You don't want it to look like you've added it on. So like sometimes you have like to scrape out a little bit. Yeah, so anyway, that's, yeah, so good, yeah, exactly. And I could take all of those suggestions and then if I did all of them, I would look, probably ruin the painting, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, if, you but you never know, right? Because everybody's different, so. Scrape it off and but you, I don't know if you guys do that. I get them home and I go, and I wait, but then I'll look at them and after a while sometimes I say, no, I'm just leaving it, I don't care. It's okay, yeah. it's good enough. <laughs> or sometimes I say, no, it's bugging me, I gotta change it. So, you know, whatever, so anyway. But it's just, uh, but it's just uh, whatever you can kind of come up with, so anyway. Um, but for me, I don't know, just in closing, um, I appreciate the chance to come here and talk to you guys. Art is, it's a big part of my life. Even if I don't make money on it, I'm going to paint. But it's fun to make money with paintings and sell paintings. It's, a, it's fun. It's fun. To, it's cool to think that somebody would pay money to buy something you made and hang it in their house, right? That's always really thrilling. It's so satisfying. And, um, yeah. And you, and, you wreck, and you see that somebody has gifts, they see what you're doing, they like it, and I love buying other people's art. I can't afford to buy much of it, but I do sometimes. <laughs> and it's fun. And um, so <clears throat> it's, um, but again, it's, it's about, it's more about, I don't know if you guys, but I get in a, I get in a, it's a meditative state, you know, you just go and you ever just paint and all of a sudden there's two hours have gone by and you, you really do lose track. I love that feeling of just that, that flow state where you're just, you're just painting and it's, because it's really a beautiful experience. Um, and I love that. That's what I love about art. So um, anyway, um, keep up the good painting. I'll see some of you at the, I'm gonna go to that show in September, so. And my brother who's a walking the brother. Theater, we're gonna share a booth. He's gonna be there. So you get to see his stuff if you wanna come from here, so anyway. Um, anything else? Yes. Just wanted to ask you, you mentioned progress kind of uh, looking at some of the old masters and how they started uh, very realistic and came up to uh, uh, abstraction again. Right. Uh, do you feel the same virtue of, of an artist that starts out very loose and abstract and finally gets up, progresses and goes to the realism? Sure. Is that the same virtue? I think so. It's just what you want to do, right? Yeah. But but I, but I think it's I think it's what I learned from art school was it's probably best to learn the skills first, right? To learn as many good drawing skills, painting skills as you can, and then you can go wherever what you want with it. It's like any other endeavor, right? If you're playing basketball, you you got to figure you got to get the basic skills down before you can play, right? And it's the same thing with art. You've got to get you got to be able to draw. So really, right? it's the the basic skills. Uh, can be used in a very, very loose where you're just painting, uh, painting, uh, uh, I don't know what, just, uh, just uh, shapes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you, you place them in your painting the same way that you would do uh, for a fine. Exactly. So you use the same skill. Yeah, so you got, it's, you got, you, you got, you still got to worry about composition. You got to worry about all those things, value, con, all those things. You, you know, John Barry, the guy I showed you that was a friend of mine that's doing the, abs, the big abstract ones. That's not easy, right? I mean, anybody can pull off. Just like anybody can take a great photograph if they're lucky, right? You just have to push the button at the right time, right? <laughs> anybody can pull off a great abstract painting, maybe once, but to do it again. And again, it takes skill. There's real skill that goes into that. And you have to know what you're doing. You have to know what you're trying to do. And it's hard. I find it terribly hard. I think it's harder to do a really good abstract almost than a realistic piece. Because I never know when I'm, I never, I, yeah. I get lost. I get lost. But other people love it. So. How about like Pollock? Pollock? Pollock. I, I, I think he was lucky that he found that style because if you've seen his paint, I don't think he was that good. <laughs> but I mean, and, and he actually, when he died, he was kind of searching for another, it's, 
something different, and I don't know if you would have gotten there. I love those. Have you ever seen one of those in person, those Paul paintings? They're cool. I mean, they're, they're like, they're, yeah, yeah, they're just, they're, they're, they, they're, they're amazing. Yeah, I like them. And it, you know, nobody has done it before, and I think they're beautiful. But I don't know if he had a lot of skill, technical skill, as far, you know what I mean? far as being able to paint realistically and all that. And, and I don't think you have to be able to draw like, you know, like Michelangelo, but you need enough skills to be able to draw what you're going to make it, you know, look at it as real as you want it to. You need that kind of level of skill. So, and so I think everybody's always, it's good to keep practicing and building though, right? You know, so just keep getting better and better. So I, I have nothing against realistic art. I think it's wonderful. I just personally, I just want to go in another way, a little bit. Somewhere in between, right? Because I just find that fascinating. Well, you know what you love. Right. You know you're happy. Exactly. And hopefully other people will see that and respond to it. Yeah, the Antique Road Show. At the Antique Road Show. Exactly. So, Treasure yeah. Detail. I mean, you, you talked about your, your personal struggle to find the style that you want. And um, Susie Gallagher used to have a note on her results that said, to paraphrase, one, this is, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Next one, this is crap. The next one, I'm crap. And then at the end, this is fun. You know? <laughs> I mean, I think we all go through that. Even you know, sometimes with individual paintings, but trying to find who we are as artists and yeah. and get find that 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 sweet spot. That's yeah, a struggle. That's yeah. hard. You need to question yourself. I think if you're not questioning yourself, you're not really working. Right. You're not moving on. If, you, if you're satisfied with what you're doing, you're probably yeah. <laughs> you got, yeah, it's, so it's always challenging. It's like anything else. You, you want to get better, and yeah, and you get frustrated. And, but it's but it's worth it. Um, I yeah, I, I saw something on Instagram a month or two ago, and it said, I think it's a great it's a great saying. It said, no more boring paintings. Right? <coughs> Don't just try to repeat yourself and do the same thing you've always done, and you know, make because it's safe and just it try sells. it. You know, just make it make it exciting. So you might fail. Um, 